Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video we're going to look at links between key balance of payments categories. We're going to bring together the current account and the capital and financial account and see how what happens on one account will then affect the other. So we're going to follow the money, learn a few tips and tricks and get started right now. Okay, so the focus of this video is what are the links between key balance of payments categories. And remember that the balance of payments has two main components. There's the current account and also the capital and financial account. Our focus here is on the fact that these two accounts are really strongly linked in particular ways. That what's going to happen on one account is going to have uh, consequences Ooh, sounds negative consequences for the other account in terms of understanding this there is a, a principle that will help you kind of try and make that connection and this is what the principle is that the principle to remember is that inflows create outflows so inflows onto one account are going to create outflows from the other account Let's take a look at an example. And the example is, is going to illustrate this principle. Inflows create outflows. So our example here is that a Chinese investor invests in Australia's resources sector. So the Chinese investor buys a small stake in an Australian mining company. Okay, small stake in Australian mining company. Now the Chinese investor does not invest for fun. The Chinese investor wants something for their investment. They want a reward for putting their money into this company. So if they are investing in a company, this particular form of investment, the type of reward that they would like or that they expect is a dividend. So the Chinese investor buying shares in a mining company, the reward that they're expecting to get are those dividends. So what we're now looking at is in terms of how we would record this for the balance of payments, let's have a look at how inflows will create outflows. So here we are with our, our little diagram of these things. We've got the, uh, here we've got the, got the mining company, the Australian mining company here. And we've got the Chinese investor on this side. So what happens is that the Chinese investor, their money, will bring the money to Australia. And this money is for the purchase of the shares. If we look at how we would classify that transaction in the balance of payments, that this money coming into Australia is recorded as a credit in Australia's financial account because we're looking here at portfolio investment. So again, when the Chinese investor puts, buys shares from Australia, that is going to be recorded as a credit in the financial account. So let's put the next step in red. So what happens though is that Australia then has to find a way to reward the investor. So the mining company here, the mining company has to pay the Chinese investors, investor dividends. So in terms of how we would record this, in terms of how we would record this on the balance of payment, well, money is leaving Australia, right? It's going from this mining company out to China. So if it leaves Australia, if it leaves Australia, it's a debit, and because it's a dividend, it's coming out of primary income. So what we can know now is that the inflow or the credit is happening on the capital and financial account, but the outflow, the debit, is taking place on the current account. The money coming in, right, the purchase of shares, that's recorded on the financial account, that's the inflow, but then the reward, the dividends that leave Australia are oh, that's an outflow from the current account. So just before we move on, just a, a quick reminder. So the buying shares, that's first step. The paying dividends, 
that's the second step and that the inflow is creating that outflow remember our saying inflows create outflows well this inflow on the capital and financial account is creating that outflow on the current account okay let's look at a, another a couple of examples to illustrate the links between the balance of payments categories so the first example here we've got is an Australian company takes out a loan from a German bank. Okay, so our first thing here is So the Australian company receives the loan from the German bank and this is an inflow of capital. So if we're looking at it as an inflow of capital, okay if it's an inflow we know it's going to be recorded as a credit because that's money coming in to australia so this will be a credit so this will be a credit on the capital and financial account because we know that loans are recorded there on the financial account so an inflow credit on the capital and financial account to record the loan a bank doesn't lend money for fun, just as an investor wants a reward, so does a bank. So if the Australian company receives a loan, the Australian company must service the loan. That is, it must pay interest on that loan. That that's the deal. When you borrow money from the bank, they're gonna make you pay interest. And when the Australian company pays interest, it's not paying to an Australian bank. Oh, no, 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 it's paying to the German bank. So that is an outflow from Australia or a debit. And remember that interest payments, income flows like that, are recorded in net primary income on the current account. So remember NPY, net primary income. So. The Australian company receives the loan, inflow, credit. The Australian company must service the loan, repay the interest. Okay, that outflow is the debit. So we can see here that that first inflow then creates that outflow. The inflow onto the capital and financial account creates the outflow from the current account. Okay, let's do another example. So our second example here is that an American investor buys a few shares in a company that is listed in Australia. For uh, ease of use, let's just say we'll call it Telstra. So an American investor buys a few shares in a company listed in Australia, which is Telstra. So let's start the process. So the first thing is there is an inflow of capital to Australia for the share purchase from the US. And then in terms of looking at how we record that, okay, so if it's an inflow to Australia, this is a credit on the balance of payments. It's money coming in to Australia. If we then think about how this is recorded, if we're looking at a share purchase, uh, it doesn't say a controlling stake, that I know that portfolio investment is on the financial account. So in terms of how this is recorded on the balance of payments, there's a credit financial account for Australia, but we can't stop there. We really, we can't stop there. There's more to do. So this inflow is then gonna create an outflow. Remember, inflows create outflows. Telstra needs to reward that investor and the reward for owning shares So there is an outflow of income dividend to the investor. So basically it's Telstra in Australia paying that income to the investor in America. Now, if that's money leaving Australia, okay, that's a debit. And that we also know that uh, dividends, rent, uh, income, all of those income streams are in net primary account on the current account. So the inflow of capital to the financial account then creates the outflow of income 
on the current account. Okay, so not an easy topic, but remember it's those uh, links between balance of payments categories. Remember our kind of uh, guiding quote. On the balance of payments, the inflows create outflows. The inflows on the capital and financial account will create those outflows on the current account. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Plenty more balance of payments content on the channel. Uh, check something out, leave a comment. Please like it if this video was useful in any way. And I'll see you next time.